Yeah. Alright, so boom, who do we have here today? I'm Lil Emo and this is Kumo the Alchemist. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and yeah, where are we? And we're in Harrow, hometown. Mm. Mad Mountain. Uh, well, <laughs> well, me, I was, I, was, I was halfway raised here. I moved here in 2012 from Atlanta. <laughs> and I've been here ever since. I moved to Hatchin first. And now I live just down the road, five minutes down the road. But you don't so. need to know what that for. Right? <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> That's yeah. solid. And um, do you, have you seen Atlanta, the Donald Glover? Yeah, I've seen Atlanta, yeah, man. Would you, would you say that's like an accurate representation? Hell yeah, with all the random shit like that, that that can just happen. Like niggas will just pop up in a suit and shit like that, and and, and ask you for. Man, one time I was in the fucking Krispy Kremes late at night in the drive-through about 3 a.m. and it's like one of them corner drive-throughs. You know, it's like you got the window here and you got to turn the corner. And it's like, I'm, as I'm driving out the corner, you can't see, like, there's a crackhead behind the wall. And, like, so I'm kind of going, I'm, like, with my dad, like, he's driving. And we was kind of going, like, mid-speed. And then this crackhead jumped out, <laughs> stopped the car, he put his hands on the car. The and he said, he said, you niggas got some coins? Oh, sugar. <laughs> Yeah, and just all the little, I love the guest stars, bro. I love every little rapper show with guest stars, like, you know what I'm talking about, Amigos and shit. Mm -hmm. I fuck with that shit, man. And even that's why I started promoting myself as, like, Paperboy Emo. Because I'm like, oh shit, Paperboy is like a made up rapper. So what a cool, like, name to kind of, like, because I'm not in Atlanta right now, it's like, if I go by that, it's like I'm paperboy emo, it's just like TI, because that's where my, my grandma stay up on Buckhead. I'm sorry, Bankhead. I think it's like Buckhead. Bankhead. And yeah, man, that's why I'm going with a paper, paper, paper root. Paper root aesthetic. Cause even my first album that I made with a proper engineer, that shit was called Paper Heart. Because I'm emo with, with this thing, so it's like it's full circle. It's Paper Heart, Paper Boy. A nigga made out of paper, like you could break my heart. You know what I'm saying? Love about that paper yeah. boy. Paper boy. Paper boy. Uh, it's emotional and it's trappy at the same time. Fully. Trap is emotional. Yeah. That's the real thing. Yeah. I ain't even in a trap life, but you know the, the, the trap life. Emotional. Exactly. Exactly. PTSD, bro. all that. Looking at your And it's like with me, I, I came from the suburbs. I came from Gwinnett. I came from Stone Mountain. That's actually where Donald Glover's from as well. Stone Mountain. Hey. That's a hard mixtape too. <laughs> and um, digital, I think Digital Nas is from there as well. Like, he's another emo type guy as well. Like, I've heard him being like, "Yeah, I'm on an emo shit." So I'm like, "Yeah, this shit really do come full circle." Hey. But what was I going to say? Oh yeah, well, well, I just obviously I had problems in my life. Like my daddy wasn't there. But I would say like, shit was bad, bad. But I was just a little ratchet kid. But it wasn't it's that no bad. <laughs> my mom got me the shit that I wanted. So. Yeah. But it was like, my mom was overbearing, so I got the chance to move here when I was 15. And so that's how like, I would say I really got into this trap life, because it's like, I had to live on my own. And I had to like, do all that shit at like the age of 14 and shit. And I was getting like, a little bit, my mom would sometimes send me some little money, and then I will try to sell something, I'll buy something and sell it. You know what I'm trying to say, so. Yeah. That reminds me of the Kid Cudi lyric. Uh Around Christmas time, my mom Christmas crying got me what got me what I wanted. How'd you do it, ma? Oh, so. exactly, <laughs> I love you, <Kikori>. exactly. <laughs> well, For me, I can't lie. My mom was professional as fuck, so I know exactly. She, she a boss. Yeah, but. she kind of like did, it wasn't too tough on me. Obviously, the first three few years when my dad left, that's deep. No woman, no person should have to raise a kid on their own. But but the ones that do, yeah, my mom went Legends. ham at it. So it's like it weren't too tough like that. I did get most of the things I wanted. So. It's when I chose, I made the choice to be on my own, and I had to deal with that. Yeah. Especially coming from a privileged background, and it's just like I'm here with the sharks. It's like the battle. Even like last last year, I was kicked out of the house. Like I was with my granddad, but he's a fuck nigga. Like he, he ain't no loving nigga. So I was like, I was on my own, but this nigga really kicked me out. And this is like in the middle of quarantine and shit. I saw a nigga was home, I had to trap it out, right? I had to go over to the country and trap that shit out, man, and just like make music on some shitty phone, like. But that's what I was trying to say, like, the music as well, go ahead and it's not like, oh, you can just trap and not do this music shit, like. Some niggas do that, but I don't believe that's totally G. Yeah. I don't believe that's G, like, I believe, like, 
I trap so that I can have the things that I need, like, like if I want to rent a venue or uh, just to live my life normally. To trap like, out of the trap. Yeah, trap yeah. it out. Like put it, invest back into legitimate shit. That's why I say I'm legit gang now. I'm not a trapper, I'm a legit gang. Like, I don't, yeah. like, you won't see me do any moves. Like, I just made a move, but you won't see me do the moves anymore. Fully. And um, going on about making legit money, uh, have you got a clothing brand? My clothing brand started out because, like, you might have heard me uh, talking about um, Alexander McQueen as soon as I... Basically, like, I've just always had a life of luxury in a way. Like, like I said, I've had problems, like, I grew up, like, kind of in the suburb, but my dad, he lived in the hood as well, like, Riverdale, Georgia. You know what I'm talking about? And then, like I said, my grandma was from Bankhead. So, it was really only my mom that kind of kept me sheltered. But I experienced different levels of luxury while still having to go back. That's all some great shit. So, like, even bad times, I would, like, by the time I was 14, I already been to Dubai twice. And from then on, I went, like, five, six more times after that. And, uh... Even before I moved here, I went to Spain, bowled out. Like, my dad was in the military for a second. Yeah. So, I got some dough. Like, I, I seen some I seen some of life. And, like, when it's like that, I could see what luxury was. I could see, like, oh, I want to do something more. Like, even in Atlanta, I feel like it's the home of small business. So, I, like, I always had that, yeah, I want to be that hood nigga. I want to be, not hood nigga, but I want to be that hood industries nigga. Like, I want to be like that, that, that that street made so street wear you know what I'm talking about so then I came here I started rapping like a year in like barely a year in like probably took me a couple months of living alone like before my parents that shit to just be homesick and just start rapping Atlanta way type shit and then my nigga was like to me <clears throat> if you really want to do this shit you can't be like wearing normal shit you can't be a normal nigga, like, you can't be, like, looking like everybody else. And then, I was like, well, how do I do that, though? Like, I had an eye for, like, kind of, like, style, but I didn't know fashion, fashion like that. Like, and I think fashion comes from culture. You know fashion from culture. So, it all comes full circle, like, with Christianity, different things like that was in my culture, is represented in, in the brands that I like. And then... That's why I created my own shit because it's like I know I have the talent and I was like just like my nigga said oh you gotta start tripping properly as soon as he said that and he gave me a couple tools I took off I started wearing shit like you see I got this jewelry on me like I got shit that normal niggas they don't have like and that will make me stand out if I go on the stage next to somebody else any given time of the week they're probably like dressed middle of the morning they're probably dressed like they just woke up out of bed <laughs> I'm wearing Crocs and a blouse for my word. Don't, don't disrespect the Crocs and the Crocs are hard. <laughs> Crocs and a blouse, I, I, I wear Margiela <laughs> and I'm walking around the town. Look, I like to fuck around. <laughs> I like to fuck around. No, but to keep it on point, yeah. That's why I got the Vivian Westwood. Her clothes represent music. Even Gunna said fashion is music. Music and fashion are the same thing. That's a big statement, but that's what I'm saying. Like you can kind of see that in Vivian Westwood. Like even Virgin Records, bro, you wouldn't have Virgin Records if it wasn't for the Sex Pistols. And like so, Vivian Westwood just come, and she's shown she's shown that fashion by like connecting it with the Crown, with R.I.P. the Queen who just died. Shout out Lizzie. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what's on the money. That's who I trust. Um, so that's why I put Elizabeth right under. The orb. I should put Elizabeth right under the orb. Maybe what maybe what's if you see this one day, you know I'm with it, yeah? <laughs> You know I'm with it. So that's what I'm trying to say with a culture, the art, the 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 music, the this thing that's intangible, you can't really touch it. It's connected with this thing that you can cut touch. Like mm -hmm. a thing that you can see and a thing that you can say, oh that's what represents like when you see a picture of um, Sid Vicious. You can say, oh, that nigga was punk. Oh, this is what punks look like. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's like, obviously we know kind of what emo people look like. We know kind of, but I'm the new emo. I'm little emo. Do you get it? So forget old, it's with the new. So I'm creating, when you're going to look at my shit, you're going to say, oh, that's what an 
them type of niggas wear. Those niggas over there, they wear that. And how it started was, it was at first my merch, it was gonna be only about me. Someone had shouted me, Nozgov, let me just go into it. So basically, Nozgov got me to collab with him on some merch, right? And then he was showing me how much money he was making. And that's what made me think to myself, like, it's time for me to get on this thing. So I had a few designs from doing my parties, like, and I have a few, like, designs I've drawn myself. So what I was, I was design rich, so you say, and so other people was drawing around me and shit, so I was like, let me put this shit on. And then, basically, when I stopped doing my parties, it was a way for me to keep that name alive. Bring a fire to the people like Prometheus. Exactly, yeah. So now it's just added on, it's a snowball. It's, it's, a, it's about the culture. That's what I'm saying. That's what the clothes is about. It's about the culture. And that's why I think my brand is important because I have a good eye for this culture. I'm a part of this culture. And, like, I'm with this shit. So. You just want to show us what you're wearing. Alright, cool. Bro, he's whipping the whole house. <laughs> Man, dude, this is the shorts I designed. We got a Jinchuriki in our presence. Dude, <laughs> you look at your Jinchuriki, the tattoos, the emo tattoo. Then you got the fucking. These, just some. TK Maxx, some random thing like. No, man, but make sure you get all of it, cause that's some dope shit there. Yeah, <laughs> then this hoodie I made, fucking the Vivian Westwood charm, you already know. Then the Vivian Westwood bracelet, I think that's the Mayfair thing. And then uh, this is uh, Christian Dior bracelet, all gold. And then obviously custom diamonds. That's custom, you can't get that. And then, uh, London Grills, shout them out for the fangs. Um, fucking, what else? Uh, just a true t-shirt, bro, I'll just show you. Just a little true. You know what I'm saying, I keep it true. And then just with the, it, the up tempos, you know what I'm saying, I keep it basketball. Cause he balling out here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Switch. Ball at the net, ball at the rim, but I never drop the rock. I, I don't play no sports, but I'm a pres professional baller in a bit. Come on. No, oh, yeah, yeah. And no, Alexander no. McQueen scarf. Come on. It, it's the shorts, though. The, the, that's, it's, it it's the angle that I've seen the thing of the shorts. It's sus, but like, bro, it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, pause. <laughs>